So we will stand up all together, raise our eyes up to the sky with faith and love in our hearts. We will embark. Oh, oh, oh. We will give. Hello my fellow Latter day Saints, Kenzie Betchell, the Mormon Entertainer here, the most inspirational Mormon in all of Asia here. Back once again, Reaction Day, Top 10 Easter Eggs in Avengers Infinity War. If you've still not seen it yet, you may want to click elsewhere because this is more than likely going to go into spoiler territory. So, yeah, let's get that out of the way. Let's do this. This film was the culmination of 10 years worth of effort, and it was jam-packed with goodies. What did you just say? I take that back. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, <laughs> and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Easter eggs in Avengers Infinity War. Ouch. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at fun Easter eggs, knowing nods, and subtle references found in Avengers Infinity War. The Avengers? The Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Like Kevin Bacon? Warning, this list contains major spoilers. Hey, yep. that is a really cute necklace. Is that Etsy? Do not touch the eye of Agamotto. Idiot. <laughs> Number 10. Thanos is coming. And now it's here. Or should I say... Reference to Game of... As you are likely aware, the third Avengers film was inspired by a comic book miniseries, The Infinity Gauntlet, and its sequel, The Infinity War. In a nice little homage to the source material, the film recreates a scene from the opening of Infinity Gauntlet, in which the Silver Surfer comes crashing through the roof of Doctor Strange Sanctum Sanctorum, loudly proclaiming in a panic, Thanos is coming. Mm -hmm. Now, Silver Surfer didn't factor into Avengers Infinity War for legal reasons, but Bruce mm -hmm. Banner was tapped to fill his shoes, and did so quite nicely. The Crimson Bands of Cytorak. Speaking of the good doctor, did you happen to notice that he whipped out a specific spell pulled straight from the pages of the comic books? In fact, there were multiple ones. Fans might have recognized the self-replicating act as the image of Icon, as well as the bolts of Balthak and the winds of Watoon. But the biggest moment of Doctor Strange fanjoy was surely when he busted out his iconic Crimson Bands of Cytorak against the Mad Titan, using them to stop Thanos from closing his fist. Taken all together, Infinity War was quite the comic accurate magic show for Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. Number 8. Thanos reenacts Snatch. Where's this done? Of course, not every Easter egg is a reference to comic books. The moment in which Thanos confronts the Collector includes a great little knowing wink to fans of Guy Ritchie. What is that, Vince? This is a dog, so. Or more specifically, his beloved crime comedy Snatch. Mm -hmm. Though this British film has little in common with the reality-bending MCU event film, mm -hmm. they do both benefit from a performance by Benicio Del Toro and feature a plot that involves the pursuit of highly coveted stones. Mm. Early on in Snatch, Del Toro's Frankie Fourfingers asks a jeweler, where is the stone? There is the stone. 17 years later, the tables have turned, and now it's Del Toro's character on the receiving end of this intimidating question. Where is the stone? Number 7. Brother? Bubbles. When bubbles, bubbles are being used by an extraplanetary being trying to change the universe as we know it, they tend to stand out. Show me. In one of the film's most dramatic moments, Chris Pratt's Star-Lord is forced to make an impossible choice when Gamora asks him to kill her rather than let her be taken prisoner by Thanos. Robbing them of all agency, however, the reality stone wielding Thanos turns Pratt's blaster into a harmless bubble gun. But why bubbles? Why? Well, in the hugely popular fighting game Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes, Thanos' attacks, for some strange reason, often involved bubbles. Regardless of the uh. in-game logic, it was a nice touch within the film. Number 6. 
A pale vision. For the uninitiated, the fact that Vision lost his coloring and turned a pale shade of grayish white after his death probably didn't get much thought. When a human dies, the loss of blood flow results in a notable loss of color in the face. So maybe they just applied the same concept to our android Avenger. Sure, but it was also a nod to a storyline from the comics. In the West Coast Avenger series from the late 80s to early 90s, Vision was kidnapped by the government and dismantled. Though he was eventually reassembled, he lost his emotional identity, which was coupled with a change in the color of his synthetic skin. Number 5. The Blue Man Honestly, this easter egg was so subtle, you were more likely to see its acknowledgement in the credits than the reference itself. As the credits roll at the end of the film, there's a line that thanks 20th Century Fox for the use of an Arrested Development character. Huh? It seems I might have stumbled upon an acting opportunity. Oh. It turns out that the Russo brothers thought a particular member of the extended Bluth family was the perfect fit for the collector's museum. And so a blue man sporting a mustache, <laughs> glasses, and cut off jean shorts can be spotted in one of the glass cases. Oh, it's that's not clever. to bias Funke actor David Cross, but it still makes for a wonderfully odd and specific Easter egg. But it's funny, if that's I hadn't sought clever. out a support group, I never would have gotten this gig as an understudy for a performance art group. And you failed. Number four, the White Wolf. Wakanda forever! This is a stable hundred year old man. How you been, Buck? Uh, not bad for the end of the world. Bucky Barnes was certainly a sight for sore eyes in Avengers Infinity War, for both audience members and Steve Rogers. Of course, now that he's apparently been deprogrammed, his Cold War moniker Winter Soldier doesn't really fit anymore. What the hell? And so T'Challa refers to him as the White Wolf. This one may be tired of war, but the White Wolf has rested long enough. This could just be interpreted as a fun play on Black Panther and Term of Endearment, but the name actually has history in the comics. First introduced in 1999 in the pages of Black Panther Volume 3, White Wolf mm -hmm. was the name eventually adopted by an orphan who T'Challa's father found and raised. Apparently, the royal family has a soft spot for strays. Number 3. An Eye for a God At the end of Thor Ragnarok, the titular god of thunder regained his power and mojo, but he lost an eye in the process. Apparently, the good folks at Marvel Studios weren't interested in having a one-eyed hero for long, apart from Nick Fury, and so <laughs> Thor was almost immediately offered a high-quality replacement by his new friend and ally, Rocket Raccoon. Thank you, sweet rabbit. But why did Rocket have a spare eye on hand? Well, as you might recall, he's got a bit of a habit of collecting spare limbs, and we actually saw him acquire it from a Ravager called Vorker in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. He's gonna wake uh -huh, up tomorrow, I love Guardians. he's not gonna know where his eye is! Gotta love a raccoon with hobbies. And Number two, loves it. Defenders Assemble. Now, credit where credit is due. Rocket would never have had an eye to give Thor had Baby Groot not gotten it for him. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, by the time Avengers Infinity War rolls around, Groot has entered his surly teenage years. Come on, Groot. Mm -hmm. Put that game down. You rot your brain. The silver lining? His adolescent rebellion takes the form of obsessively playing a delightfully relevant retro video game, Ooh. Arcade Defenders. This ah. works on multiple levels. Most simply, the game centers around protecting Earth from alien invaders, much like the plot of the film. Groot, put that thing away. Now, I don't want to tell you again. Groot. And Groot. Whoa! <laughs> and, more importantly, though, the comic book team The Gotta Defenders has featured numerous Infinity War characters over the years, including Hulk and Doctor Strange, among others. Number one, Uncle Morgan. He might not have the name recognition of Uncle Ben, but it's the obscurity of this lesser known comic book uncle that makes his referencing such a great Easter egg. When trying to pitch Pepper on the idea of them having kids, before he went off to an alien planet, Tony suggests that they could name their yet to be conceived or even agreed upon child Morgan after an eccentric uncle of his. Uh, what was his name? Right. Morgan. Morgan. Boom. Morgan Stark made his debut in Tales of Suspense number 68 in 1965 and was actually Tony's villainous cousin, who, out of jealousy, was constantly trying to steal the company or otherwise ruin Tony. Eccentric indeed. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Not bad. Not bad. How's it?
Boom. Right. Surprised they didn't have any honourable mentions with regard to the Easter eggs. In particular, the uh, famous Stanley cameo, who, by the way, is a bus driver in this one. Anyway. Anyway, that'll, uh, that'll be it uh, for now. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, hit the thumbs up. If you want to be baptised into following the channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Latter DC Instant Notification Squad so you don't miss anything I do on the channel. My. Excuse me. I've got. Rocket League on the left, Reactions Playlist on the right, Throwback Thursdays tomorrow. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day, peace out, stay faithful as always.